Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, my name is Precious and I'm an emergency medicine resident. So today's video is gonna be all about applying to medical school and specifically your primary application for medical school. So for me, it's been almost seven years since I submitted my primary application to medical school. It seems like so long ago. I remember during that time, I was finding all of my resources and gaining information about the process through looking online, like on different forums, like Student Doctor Network, or Reddit. Um, so what I hope to do with this video is to create a concise area that you guys can look back to and figure out what to do for your primary application. And I would like to thank today's sponsors, Motivate MD, and I'll talk about them a little bit later in the video. So to start off with, how do you even apply? What platform do you use? So your primary applications are going to be hosted on AMCAS. That's the website where you apply. So on May 3rd, AMCAS opens up and you're able to start filling out your primary application. On May 27th, you're now able to submit your primary application and send them off to all your designated medical schools. From there, AMCAS says it takes about six to eight weeks before your primary application is verified. And verification means that all the coursework, the transcripts we submitted, some of the background information that you submitted, all those things are looked at, reviewed, and then verified. All right, so there are eight sections in your primary application. Section one through three is just the background information. Um, so you're gonna ask your name, your date of birth, um, all the schools that you attended, your citizenship, um, your ethnicity, your race, just basic background information is gonna be a part of section one through three. All right, section four is your coursework and your official um, transcript. In this section, I recommend getting a copy of your transcript from each college that you attended because with section four, you have to answer every single course that you took in college as well as the grade. You want to make sure all of this information is correct. So definitely ahead of time, request those transcripts from each university that you attended. All right, section five is for your work and activities. And I believe this section is where you can start to set yourself apart from other applicants. Now, you can highlight up to 15 different work and activities but always remember, quality is better than quantity. So I'm gonna give you some examples of what can go under your work and activities experience. So any extracurricular activity, any medically related experience and exposure, any employment opportunities, any volunteer work, internship, and research. Now for my application during this section, I highlighted all the shadowing experience that I had, all the volunteer opportunities that I had. I did a couple of research projects, which I included in this section. And I also highlighted some of the work experience that I had while in college. Now, when writing the description for the activities that you decide to choose, a couple of things that you should consider is, what exactly did you do with this activity? What was the impact that this activity had on you or on others? And what is the relation between this activity and your future career in medicine? So make sure you're choosing the activities that really resonate with you. Make sure you're able to choose activities that you can really expand on and talk about passionately if you're asked about it in either your secondary application or during your interview. So again, I feel like this is a section which really starts to set you out as an applicant. If you have any research ex experience, be sure to highlight it in um, the work and activities uh, section. Any shadowing experience, be sure to highlight it here and talk about what you learned from that shadowing experience. Maybe you realize this specialty is the track that I wanna go down, or maybe it opened up a lane to realizing I wanna go down this certain specialty. Um, any meaningful volunteer experience, again, work experience, whether that's as a medical assistant, whether that's working some um, job at your school if it was impactful for you you can definitely talk about that and again just highlight experiences that really resonate with you that really show some of your passions or some of your hobbies and that you'll be able to talk about during um, interview time or on your secondary application and because this section is so significant it is important to have a second set of eyes read over the description area for your activity section and that's where motivate md comes into place so Motivate MD has admissions committee members that works for their company and so they can provide custom feedback and advice on your activity section in the description that you wrote for that section. The turnaround is usually about 48 to 72 hours. Um, they can talk about the content, your tone, um, how you're describing that. So it's a very important that you have a second set of eyes because this section is so important. All right, section six, letters of recommendation. I believe this is a very important section as well. So letters of recommendation allows a letter writer to really, um, you know, on your behalf, speak about you, your character, your quality, some of the qualities you may have as a future physician. And I believe that these letters of recommendation can hold a lot of weight. Now, who should write your letter of recommendation? 
This can be maybe one of your professors in college, um, maybe one of your advisors. Sometimes your school will do like a committee letter where they have several letter writers coming together and writing one letter for you. If you really worked um, long term with the physician on a shadowing experience, then that's a possibility that they can write a letter for you. But I wouldn't choose a position um, if you only worked with them one or two times because you know people sometimes have the assumption that getting a position to be a letter a writer will hold a lot of weight but if they can't active um if they can't accurately talk about your characteristics um some of the qualities that you have as a future physician some of the qualities that you have as a student i think that'll actually be more hurtful than helpful to have a physician as your letter writer so really choose somebody that can provide us a, a perspective with somebody that knows you. And when you're writing or when you're asking for a letter of recommendation, make sure to ask if that person can write you a strong letter of recommendation. If they say they can't, then just move on and ask someone else. All right, section seven is the medical schools. This is your chance to designate which medical schools that you want your primary application sent out to. And this is a huge section. Now, oftentimes we don't even know where to begin as far as how to, to decipher out and figure out which school would be the best to apply to, but there is a resource called MSAR and I'm gonna leave the link here and in the description box. Now, this is um, a platform that allows you to access every single school in the United States. Um, there is a subscription fee. I believe when I applied, it was about $30. I bought the subscription and it was definitely worth it. So you can go through each school one by one. It tells you the average MCAT score. It tells you the average average GPA for accepted students and it tells you how many students are accepted into each class. This gives you an idea of how competitive you'll be with applying to this school. And it also lets you set yourself up to example if you want to apply geographically like maybe only certain schools in the southeast or maybe schools in the northeast. You can then narrow it down, go to MSAR and figure out what schools in that area fits your application or fits your statistics. So if the average MCAT, for example, is a 520 and you have a 490, it may not be a good idea to apply to that REACH school. So you should look for schools that fit into um, your average GPA and your MCAT and apply to those schools. Now, don't get me wrong, it is okay to have a few REACH schools, but all the schools that you have on your list that you're applying to should not be REACH schools. You need to make sure that you're applying to schools that fit your MCAT and fit your GPA and schools that you'll be competitive to as far as applying. So, for example, if you're applying to 20 schools, maybe about four of those, for me personally, I would say maybe four of those would be REACH schools and the other ones, I will look at the statistics compared to my statistics and make sure it makes sense to apply to those schools. So just make sure that you're being selective with the schools that you're applying to. So you can be a solid applicant, but if you're applying to all Ivy League schools, then you're potentially gonna have an unsuccessful application cycle because you didn't target the specific schools that matches your application. So again, be selective, make sure that your numbers are matching up with the numbers to the schools that you're applying to. All right, finally, section eight is the personal statement. So this is your opportunity to tell admissions committee about yourself and maybe tell them something that they wouldn't learn by looking at other parts of your application. So this is your opportunity to maybe describe some obstacles that you face, some challenges that you overcome, maybe why you want to become a physician and why you'll be a great physician. So at its core, a personal statement is a persuasive letter. Um, it's a persuasive essay pretty much convincing, convincing the admissions committee of your worth as an applicant. And they're going to be reading hundreds of essays. So it's important that yours is unique and that you're able to stand out through this essay. So Motivate MD offers custom essay reviews. They do not believe in the cookie cutter process for essay reviews. So all of the reviews and advice given are tailored individually to each applicant. And they also offer crucial admissions insight. So they view the admissions process before from a student perspective. So they identified patterns that make certain students memorable and competitive. So many of the editors have actually been on their school's admissions committee, so they know what to look for when it comes to what essay could potentially get you accepted to medical school. And they're affordable to medical students. They've been there before. They know that at this point, we don't have much money as students, but we're looking for that acceptance, so they make it truly affordable to the students. So one part about Motivate MD that I really want to highlight is their ultimate acceptance package. So this is an all-encompassing package. Um, it's for medical school um, applicants that really want to increase their chance to get accepted and really optimize their time. So I'm just going to go over a few of the um, things that are included in the ultimate acceptance package. 
All right, so with this package, you're gonna have unlimited personal statement reviews. You're gonna have unlimited AMCAST activity essay reviews. You're gonna have Casper prep. You're gonna have secondary essay editing. Um, you're also gonna get mock interviews, either multiple mini interview style or the traditional medical school interview style. Um, you're gonna get some application guidance and um, advising. And you're gonna have constant communication with the editors. So again, this is for the highly motivated applicant. If you're looking to put your all into your application this cycle and you want all the resources possible, I feel like this ultimate acceptance package is the one for you. And they also have other customizable options. So if you just wanna get the package where you have the personal um, statement review, or if you just want your activity section reviewed, or if you just want some advice about the application process, there's different customizable options. I honestly feel like this is a great resource. If this was around in my time, I would have definitely utilized it to put my best foot forward and give myself the best chance of getting that acceptance. So if you're gearing up for the application season, if you're getting ready to apply, if you're reapplying, definitely consider Motivate MD. If it's not your entire application, they can help you with one portion of your application to help you strengthen your application. And of course, I have a discount code for you guys. You can use the code WCC to get 10% off on any service that you choose. All right guys, so that was my review of the primary application. There are eight parts. Some parts are more important than the others, but it's important in each section that you stand out to the best of your ability, that you put your best foot forward. It's April, we're right around the corner. The applications open up in May. I have faith in all of you. If you guys have any questions, if you need any advice about the medical school application process, feel free to reach out to me or reach out to Motivate MD and we can help get you on the right track. I'm gonna leave all the information below in the description box so you can locate it there. If you thought this video was helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.